Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lynn, the leather bag lady. It is afternoon. Yes, it is. It's 1230. <laughs> Welcome to Lynn life, leather bag lady life. Um, just got home, went to the post office with yet another package. So, uh, if any of, uh, I know Pauline sometimes watches and, um, Snooka Peak sometimes watches, but if any of my other, uh, customers are watching, thank you for your, uh, purchases. I really do appreciate you supporting, um, small business, um, and supporting Etsy as well. I had a lady message me today to say that she got her bag and she was thrilled and she just is very um, happy to support uh, small businesses at this crazy time. So yeah, I, I do really appreciate it and I'm sure there was another reseller at the post office this morning and we were talking about how uh, grateful we are. We wish Canada Post was a little uh, more, uh, what would be the word, equipped, prepared for um, what we're dealing with right now. I mean, it's been almost a year. I don't know. It uh, it seems almost too long for a company of that size to still be struggling. Um, I know here in Hamilton, our Stony Creek mail sorting uh, depot has had numerous uh, bouts of COVID. And I guess these things can't be uh, foreseen. And there's only one other major uh, sorting uh, facility in our area, which is Mississauga. So if Stony Creek is closed down, then everything goes to Mississauga and they just, they couldn't handle it any before that. So, but you know what, like I said, I mean, I know nothing about nothing, but I mean, it's been a year. Let's, you know, do we need another sorting plant? I mean, uh, Joseph Brandt Hospital put a, a ward out in the parking lot, tented for COVID. I mean, can we not? There's so many people needing a job. My son and daughter need a job. <laughs> anyway, uh, soapbox back under the bed. Um, leather bag lady weather report. It's a beautiful day. It's another cold one, but uh, the sun... It's just beautiful. It. Uh, I took my heavy shearling uh, coat with me, and first of all, it was getting all salt from the car, and I really didn't want that to happen. And B, it's so heavy, so I ended up putting it off, taking it off, and putting it on the back seat because I was going to go to Walmart, and I thought, what if there's a lineup and I'm not with uh, without a coat? So anyway, I ended up not going to Walmart. Went to Giant Tiger. I forget about Giant Tiger all the time. Unless I'm in Dunville, I don't think about Giant Tiger, but Giant Tiger is awesome. I went and got a few little bits for Valentine's Day. So um, yeah, so that's what I did. So I did my marathon uh, listing day yesterday. I think he ended up 12 or 13 bags got listed yesterday. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to show you them all. Uh, I might do because some of them are quite small. I uh, got the vintage co uh, coach bag back yesterday. This is the uh, vintage bucket bag that I sent to somebody beginning of January and they sent it back because they they said there was a really bad smell. There's no smell. I mean, it's a leather bag. It smells of leather. Uh, a little bit of buyer's remorse, I think. But I'm thrilled that it came back in a condition that I could just relist it again. Because whatever this person, I don't know if they got, you know, superhero nose or something. There's no smell in this bag. So, um... I've told her what a refund is. I have a, a refund policy. We've talked about this before. Um, any taxes that are charged, certain uh, over a certain dollar amount going to the states, there's a tax that's charged. That money doesn't come to me, so that's not including your refund. And uh, there's a 20% uh, restock fee if there's any refunds given. So I hope she knows that because uh, I think it cost her over 30 bucks to send it back to me. So I, she would have been better to keep it and just sell it 
in her own community. She might have gotten more money. But anyway, I'm thrilled to have it back. I don't know. Maybe it's just meant to be mine. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's not one of the bags I'm sharing with you. So bag number one. Uh, starting to look at the spring summer uh, offerings that I have this is just a off-white nice little leather uh, bag and I've still got the silica pack in it it's it's in excellent excellent condition there is a couple of little wear spots here But guess what I got yesterday? My paints. So it may be that I may try and paint that little bag. So, um, yeah, so this is the start. What's it called? Um, I don't think it, I think it's a little more than a starter kit. Yeah, I don't know. But I've watched, this is the name of the company. I've been watching videos. This company centers its business around uh, people who do custom sneaker painting. Wow. Who knew? The, there's a whole world of uh, artists out there who paint sneakers. And this is um, one of the products that they use. And I, I, it's fascinating. I've, I watched it all night last night. It was amazing, some of these uh, jobs. And I'm really interested in seeing, because they do uh, restorations as well. So I'm really interested to see some of the other products. Um, like they have a product if the paint's getting too thick. They have a product if you're painting onto a non-porous um substance so for sneakers it's like you know rubber plastic they have this uh, hardener that goes into the paint i mean incredible incredible so um and that all started with my uh with vintage coach collector telling me about it's hadrian and then seeing all of the products that he uses so anyway back to the little bag it's um, an 80s bag. There's no foam pockets or anything like that. There is a zippered pocket and then this little guy that comes off for your keys if, if you want to make use of that. That cute little bow detail on the, on the zipper pull. So, you know, simple, simple, simple little bag. That's bag number one. Bag number two is kind of cool. So this has like an Aztec motif on the front and then there's silver accent threading these little lighter areas are silver um it's a great little bag little uh shoulder bag for sure crossbody yes yeah, a high sitting crossbody there is a little bit of space you could maybe get a one more hole in there just to bring it down a tiny little bit but the fun thing about this bag is it has an attached wallet. But again, I have had a couple of these in the last uh, few days. So that's what that looks like. There's uh, an ID. It's kind of dark. There's an ID pouch here, a slip pocket, uh, a little thingy for a pen, a zipper compartment here, and then a couple of card slots. Um, so that is its two zippers and then this has a central compartment and two zipper compartments I mean what and there's a zipper compartment in here as well what a lot of bang for your buck with this little guy and then that simple little kind of embossed Aztec uh, motif nice little gusset on it it's a cute, cute, cute little bag. The underside of the strap is fabric, not leather. Look at my poor nails. That was a big fail using my own uh, nail polish. So I'll have to get my senior to uh, get me 20% off tomorrow at uh, Shoppers. <laughs> so that's bag number two. Bag number three. 
is just a simple shoulder kind of hobo poochette. These little bags, um, I watch purse flipping and I mean, she says the same thing. They are all coming back. These little, these little shoulder bags, they're all coming back. This uh, beautiful, 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 simple, simple little bag. It's probably an 80s bag. There's absolutely no pockets for phones or anything like that. It's kind of like a gray blue um, fabric inside. The brand is um, Arezzo. It's a Brazilian uh, brand. There is a little bit of glue showing through above the uh, zipper of, of the side pocket. And then there's a little uh, hook for your keys if, if you want to use that. Other than that, it's just a very open... I take the lining out? Yeah, it's just a very open, clean lining, no pockets other than that one uh, zipper pocket. So it's it's a nice quality bag. The leather is lovely. There's, uh, there is some tarnishing on the metal buckles here. And then it's got this really cool little zipper pull, which I have taken a picture of because this is the kind of stuff that I want to replicate in some, in some way. I'm starting to get quite the little file in my uh, camera uh, storage of just pulls that I, I want to take inspiration from. So simple, simple little bag, but really, really nice. Got a nice gusset on it. It's uh, classy, very classy. So that is bag number three. Bag number four is a little clutch slash shoulder from uh, Aldo. So this is an 80s Aldo, when Aldo used to be, as I've mentioned many, many times, the young person's go-to for leather. And then uh, Calderon was kind of your mom's place for leather, and then Aldo bought Calderon out. So it's very simple inside. There's the Aldo label. There's a zipper. There's some uh, Aldo uh, labeling on the fabric inside. All leather. Has a zipper across the top. A little bit of ruching here. Has a cool little... Uh, little tag here just telling you it's leather telling you it's Aldo and uh, yes I did take a photo of this one as well I quite like this one I like the look of that one so that's just a tiny little Aldo a little bit more no same amount of gathering nice little bag again the little shoulder huge 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 now this one is awesome. I really, really, really like this little bag. This bag is new with tags. The brand is Fonker Lucky Bag. Now it's an Asian brand, obviously, because <laughs> do you know what all that says? I don't Let me focus. Uh, it's coming up a bit blurry. Anyway, the whole point is it is new with tags. It's a red. Oh, I didn't realize there was a zipper on the back. Okay. It's a red patent leather. Nice zipper pocket on the back. It has a detachable strap. So you can uh, take the strap off on both sides and use it as a clutch, which would be nice, because it's real fire engine red. It's really red. Has this little kind of faux padlock motif on the front, and then the leather inside. It's all raw leather, and you know how I feel about raw leather. I just love it. 
and then it's um, got kind of a complimentary brown color inside so you have um, kind of a useless well I mean it's a slip pocket it, it's not really it's tiny so it dates it very easily you know kind of mid 90s uh, compartment divider with a zipper another compartment and a zipper and I think sometimes I don't know but in my experience going to sample sales sometimes you find bags that are like this and they're just ready for somebody's logo to be put on it so I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't a sample of some sort but either way it is really cute and right on trend with that uh, shoulder uh, resurgence the little shoulder uh, pouchette bags now this next bag I love it there's no branding there's no labeling it's red suede it's gorgeous so this front part is quilted the back is just plain but the I love the the tassel I love 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 tassels but the part that I love is the chain check this out it is I can't find any tarnish any loss of color anywhere it's beautifully long you could use its crossbody and this gold tone is so on trend right now inside it's got one little zipper pocket and then the rest is just open and then there's a little pocket here nice little gusset there was there is a little you know little there's a fold here and that's kind of darkened the suede a little bit but um, in the pictures on Etsy there does look to be some shadowing here or it looks out uh, there's darkening here it's just shadow if you see it here it's as bright as bright can be all over it's a great little bag I really like it and th this chain does have a little bit of weight to it um, but how 80s dynasty does this look it's just fabulous I love it so that's bag number where are we one two three four five now my final bag I love the trend I've talked I've spoken about the trend before the trend is a Canadian company out of Montreal um, they've been around for a very long time, late 70s, I believe. And I've owned multiples of this brand, and I love them. The leather quality is amazing. Now, this one is probably a little closer to being just a vintage bag. And there's a couple of reasons I say that. Uh, first off, just the style. So um, it's a little, a little uh, side bag, nice little gusset front and back and then you've got a detachable really nice length crazy long strap I think it's like a 26 inch strap drop it's really very comfortable for me and I you know again I'm not a tiny lady so but where we go now is inside and this little thing is just for decoration it opens up and let's start this journey so you've got a pocket here for I'm not sure what you would put in there maybe even change you've got a little slip thing here for a pen or whatever there's a compartment with one slip pocket and then you have um, an attached wallet so you have all these card slots there's one two three four five there's ten card slots which dates it to a more modern bag obviously I mean if you look at 60s bags or even though the 60s wallets there was maybe one or two card slots because you had a driver's license and you had a credit card and that was it and then on the other side you've got a zipper compartment now the sides this will cinch this will snap just to make it a little bit more streamlined 
you can still get into that compartment, but it's not quite as open. Now, so not only does all these card slots date it, but all of a sudden, this, the label is saying uh, the trend designed in Italy, not made in Italy. Now, that's a big difference from um, some of the bags that I've had in the past from this company that all say made in Italy. So, probably inevitable. It's pro a lot cheap. I mean, the leather quality is still gorgeous. And I mean, that would be a bit of a decision, wouldn't it? Do I cheapen the leather quality and still have them made in Italy? Or do we keep the leather quality and you know, go somewhere where they're a little cheaper to make. I don't know. It's a very controversial topic, isn't it, really? You know, uh, getting things made in, you know, either underdeveloped countries or, or whatever. But anyway, we're selling vintage. We're repurposing. We're reusing. So maybe we're doing our own little part for uh, the planet. I don't talk about that enough um, because for me, it's just affordability. I couldn't afford to buy this bag new. Um, I mean, this is a few hundred dollars new. And I mean, I think I have it listed for like 67 bucks or something. And that includes shipping. And it's not just shipping, it's expedited and tracked shipping. That seems to be an upgrade for a lot of Etsy sellers. It's a standard for me. I always include a tracking slip and um, or a tracking number. And, you know, there we go. So that's our last our last bag. So yesterday was kind of a funny day. I got the vintage coach bag back. I got my paints and oh, I'll show you what else I got. I'll just bring a couple. I got, I'll bring the red ones. So as you know, I love pom poms. So these are what I got yesterday, and there's two more over there, a gray and a black. But this is a real deep burgundy, and then it has these, um, these tassels. I've got plastic on them now. I don't really want to take the plastic off. But um, So that's a burgundy, that's a pink, and then this is a purple, and if you, it's, they're very, um, it's just like little string, whatever. So my plan for these is to deconstruct these because the way I feel about it is there's one, oh, here it is. See, there's one, two, three, four items that I can use in my purse charm design process. I can take these apart. I can deconstruct them. I can, you know, use them all. It's a lot going on for just one thing to be hanging from your bag or whatever. So, um, so I got these delivered yesterday as well. It was like, holy moly, it was like Christmas again yesterday. So that's my day. I, uh, I didn't stay up quite so late last night. The night before was ridiculous. It was a really, 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 really late night. So I'm going to look at a trailer park today, a 12-month trailer park in uh, on the way to Niagara Falls. Um, my mom and dad are very anxious for me to stay in this little house and just persevere and get it fixed up. But I don't know. I'm going to get as much information as I can on both options and then I will make my decision. I'm not in a rush by any means. This little house will always be the cheapest house in Hamilton. And it will always be in demand because it is the cheapest house in Hamilton. A handy Andy could come in here and, I mean, it would, I, I can only imagine how magnificent this little house would be after somebody, you know, renoed it. So, um, anyway, it's cheap and I can live here and it's probably the only reason that I can sell purses as a hobby, um, and and still have any type of quality of life because let's face it if I was paying the 13 14 1500 dollars a month for you know one bedroom apartment 
I wouldn't be able to do that. So anyway, have a great rest of the day. Enjoy the day. It's a beautiful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye everybody.